I am fixing to get my machine ready and hook myself up and I'm going to take you through everything while I do this. First, on the back of the machine, hit the power button and if you can see that, it's coming on. It takes a minute to get ready. This right here is my it's my basically my prescription card that when I put that card in it tells the machine exactly how many hours, how many drains, how many fills, how long in between, everything. Okay, right here I already weighed myself and I weighed 163 tonight. And now I'm going to check my blood pressure. Am I talking loud enough? quiet and still for a second. That's actually really good for me. It's usually much higher than that. If you look, you can see what it was last night. I don't know if I start to put this. If you can read that, it's kind of blurry on that. Last night it was 170 over 105. Tonight, this thing, if you go too fast, it gets way ahead of you and starts jumping down in the double digits and single digits, so you have to go slow with it. And remember, I have been doing this every night for 13 years. It gets kind of old. I can't ever call in sick. I can't ever miss. I have to do 10 hours every single night. This is what I have to do before I can even lay down. Now, I hit enter again. I hit stop. It says it's in standard mode. And now, press go to start. This is a Home Choice Pro by Baxter. That's also where I get my solutions from. Dialysis solutions. This is the bags. I use two of these every night. It flushes this in and out of my peritoneal cavity. You can see my, my belly is full of fluid. I'll, show, I'll video tomorrow and show you what I do during the day. Here I'm out of these bags. And then I hang one on the IV pole, like so. You always want to look and make sure it's 6,000 milliliters. Expires February 2017. And I'm using 2.5 dextrose. These are greens, is what I call them. And you, you just want to make sure it's not out of date. And that it has to be nice and clear like that, or you don't want to use it. If anything's damaged, you have to throw it out. If, if I touch... When that tab is off, if I touch that accidentally, I have to throw it away and start all over. Which I have done before, unfortunately. And this one goes, that's a bag warmer. That warms it up really fast. Because you don't want that going in your peritoneal cavity cold. It causes you to cramp really bad. Got to put on my medical mask. And now, I have to sanitize my hands. I have to do this several times. Because you, you can't risk and, uh, contaminating. I had a brain fart. <laughs> okay. I get it rubbed in real good. Make sure I got all my, my entire hand. This integrated APD set, it's called a cassette. These are sterile. What you do is you just poke a hole in it, tear it open. And I use this bag for the waste while I'm looking everything up. This is, this is the cassette. 
This one I hooked myself up to. It hooks up to me. This one drains. This one goes to the warmer. It's red. This one goes to this bag. This, you can see, a, this fits into the machine. You pull this lever up, and you can see it fits right in there. And it has this right here that cuts it off if you push stop, if you stop it or anything or right now it, it just locked down on it because you don't want any air getting in these okay and then I this snaps onto the front like that and I throw these away the little tape that you put on it I clamp this one off because I don't use this tube and I clamp this one off you use this one if you're gonna put a, a small bag to take a sample uh, that's what you use that for now I gotta sanitize again. And now it's what it's doing is self-testing. Um, it's making sure that all the lines are cleared. And after this, this takes this takes several minutes. After it's done with this, I'll show you. I'll show you when it gets there. But it kind of gets annoying because I can come in here so sleepy. I'm ready to go to bed and I have to do all this and it wakes me up I never sleep at night and they've tried sleeping pills none of it works they finally gave me Xanax that helps but they only give me enough for about 15 days so I'm out now can't get any more and I just don't sleep I just lay there especially when this thing's cycling because it puts pressure on your abdomen and you can feel it it hurts me more whenever it's draining a lot of people it hurt it, if it hurts them then it hurts whenever it's filling, but it's the opposite for me. And I have to lay flat on my back because that thing will alarm and stop. I've had it when I used to be able to sleep. Just after that failed transplant in 2002, or 2010, I'm sorry, they really messed me up. I had a little bit of residual kidney function before that, that failed kidney transplant, and now I have absolutely no kidney function. They're completely dead because of all the anti-rejection meds and all the treatments they try to do to get my kidneys going so I rely solely on this and then my day tre treatments that's does all the work on my kidneys but not exactly okay now I clamp all of these and I take this this is the drain line and I'll go ahead and pop that off and I run this into the bathroom it drains into the toilet Basically, this is how I urinate, because I, I haven't urinated in about two years at all. <laughs> I know it's weird, but I don't make urine. My body doesn't make urine, so I can't get rid of the waste unless I do this. <clears throat> and I clamp this onto the side of the toilet. I bought this clamp online. It's very, very handy. I close that. And now, time to sanitize. Again. <laughs> Always wash my hands before I even start this with a good antibacterial soap and then I sanitize constantly while I'm doing it to, to lower the, the chance of contamination. Okay, now this one goes to the heater bag. What I do is I pop this, I pop this off at first actually. The camera's messed me up. <laughs> Pull that off and do not touch that. Or this. Just go straight in and be very careful. And then squeeze it on there real tight. And then this one goes to the IV pole bag. Same thing. Pull that off. And extremely careful not to touch. I've touched those before and you have to throw everything away like I was saying earlier and that you have to start all over okay now this has a breakaway right there so that opens that line and then I open that same thing here that could be a problem they do that sometimes and it'll alarm all night and this thing is super loud I'm trying to get it nah, I think it's gonna be okay and then I open this one and now I press go and I can take this off for now it's priming 
is basically pushing all the fluid out of this and making sure there's no air in the lines and it'll fill this all the way up and then I'll hook myself up um, it, it gets frustrating at first when I first started in, in 2002 I only had to do eight hours every night and no day treatment and I had dry days which mean I I didn't have to carry any fluid in my abdomen while I was during the day and that was awesome I could still work out because yeah, I love going to the gym and I could pretty much do everything I could eat anything I wanted could drink anything I wanted my labs were perfect and then after in 2010 when I had that uh, the kidney transplant I it changed everything I was in the hospital for three months mainly in ICU and the medications they gave me changed my taste I could everything tasted terrible so I lost a hundred pounds plus they did thymo and they did plasmapheresis and they did another treatment I can't remember what it's called I tried to forget all that stuff it was a nightmare it was a nightmare I, I couldn't come back home all this was in Fort Worth and we had to get a, a, a apartment close to the clinic which I was supposed to stay in I'll still have to, I'll have to do that when I get another transplant too but Baylor offered a discount on the apartments they had actual apartment complex I only got to stay in there for three nights because I started having terrible problems got very sick my incision busted open I had to get a wound back and then when I finally got out in three months I had home health coming by three times a week because they had to it was, it was open, the whole cavity was open and they had to put fresh tape, they had to stuff sponges down inside of me with a tube and I had a machine I had to carry 24 hours a day and it was basically pulling out the fluid that was building up pus and fluid, it was nasty and I didn't think that thing was ever going to heal but after that everything just went downhill um, I have to eat very very strict diet now or else my labs get far out of hand they get really bad I have to take uh, I don't know have they're in, at the table I have these pills here they're 667 milligrams of calcium acetate I have to take five of these pills every time I eat anything because my body does not um, you can't process phosphorus which is pretty much in everything and those bind the phosphorus but like Dark sodas have a ton of phosphorus, so I don't drink dark soda. I don't drink sodas at all. I just drink water, and I mainly eat. I have to have high protein while you're on this because you lose all your nutrients every time you do these treatments. So I have to I have to eat high protein and you know a lot of healthy veggies and things. Um, I mainly eat grilled chicken and salads, and every now and then I, I mess up and I just take a lot of those pills, <laughs> but I. Uh, it makes me sick so here lately I haven't been messing up near as much and this is still priming it it takes quite a while to prime um, I hope I get a transplant because I really love more than anything to be able to just go to sleep and not have to do all this and just lay down and go to sleep and not have this going on for 10 hours every night it gets really old. Um, I know I'm thankful that I have it because I'd be dead if I didn't, but it'd be so nice to have a kidney though. Um, there's a lot of things that I can't do anymore that I love to do, like swimming. I, I can't, I can't, because I'll get peritonitis, which is kind of like gangrene in your, in your peritoneal cavity. It's terrible. You can die from it. I've had it three times, and uh, it's oh, it's no joke. I was in the hospital um, about seven days each time, and they have to give you tons of IV antibiotics. They have to put antibiotics in my my tube because it has to go down in the peritoneal cavity, and um, it, it's just miserable. You feel, oh my gosh, it's the worst pain ever. It just feels like somebody has a blowtorch in your stomach and, and you just have no strength. It, or it